How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question for pathology step one internal medicine surgery 2CK. Before we get started with the subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, MHL man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. Six nine year old man brought to emergency because of severe abdo pain for the past four hours. He has a history of chronic atrial fibrillation. Abdominal examination shows mild diffuse tenderness palpation. Fecal cold blood is positive. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin normal 14 grams per deciliter. Should be 13 to 17.5 in males, not menstruating women 12 to 17.5 menstruating women white blood cells slightly elevated 12,000 should be 4 to 11,000 pH low 7.2 should be 7.35 to 4.5 pCO2 low 25 should be 33 to 44 PO2 normal 85 should be 80 to 100 question one is the most likely diagnosis so first looking at the acid-based disorder here this is clearly a metabolic acidosis okay with respiratory compensation. Now, we know that even with the bicarb now listed because it's impossible to have a pH of 7.2 if your CO2 is low, right? So the implication is, well, you have to have a low bicarb. So we have a metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation, and we make note that the white blood cells are elevated. You need to know that there doesn't necessarily have to be an infection with leukocytosis. There's something called SIRS, that's more 2CK, systemic inflammatory response syndrome, which in cases of stress, distress, uh, you can get leukocytosis occasionally, even a low-grade fever, okay? Same way you can get tachycardia or high respiratory, but it's not always due to infection. So let's just whip the answer choice here. Should I say abdominal aortic aneurysm? Wrong fucking answer. Now, you should just be aware for U.S. Simile that this will present as a pulsatile mass in the epigastrium. The biggest risk factor is smoking, age. So it'll, it'll be smoking, okay? But it's generally going to be males who are over the age of 55 who... Have been smokers all right but if you're going to memorize one risk factor it's going to be smoking for triple a you should also know that uh, these can cause cholesterol emboli uh, classically to the feet okay so if a patient has a triple a repair as an example and then they tell you or they show you an image of violaceous lesions on the feet and you're like what the fuck it's just cholesterol emboli okay uh, parts of that atherosclerotic plaque have launched off to the feet and then for 2CK stuff, you need to know that uh, you only do surgical repair if the aneurysm is greater than 5.5 centimeters or if it has uh, grown more than 0 0.5 centimeters per month for the past six months. Otherwise, you're just going to do serial ultrasounds to monitor it. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diverticulitis, wrong fucking answer. So this is going to be a patient... Over the age of 60, usually, I've seen maybe one question was 50s. But you're going to have an elderly patient who has left lower quadrant pain and fever. That's diverticulitis, okay? Diverticulosis just refers to usually asymptomatic diverticuli in the colon, classically sigmoid colon, in patients over the age of 60. They can sometimes bleed. You can get a diverticular bleed, or they can just be asymptomatic. As I said, 50% of the U.S. population over age 60 has diverticulosis, but if one of the diverticula becomes inflamed, we now call that diverticulitis. And as I said, classically patient over the age of 60, lower left quadrant pain and fever, you're going to do a CT to diagnose, you're going to give simple antibiotics for it, never scope acutely, you can cause perforation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, gastroenteritis, wrong fucking answer. Just generic answer choice here if you don't know what's going on. I mean, you could be aware of uh, viral gastroenteritis in adults such as Norwalk virus, cruise ships, conferences, uh, close quarters. Uh, you could be aware. So that's obviously viral. Uh, most com That's the most common one in adults. You've got uh, pediatrics, rotavirus, especially unvaccinated. Uh, unvaccinated over the age of two months or just under the age of two months. That's when we start vaccination. Um, could also be Campylobacter jejuni. That's the most common cause of uh, bacterial gastroenteritis in adults. That'll be from poultry. That'll be blood in the stool. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, ischemic colitis. Wrong fucking answer. Now, this is a little bit tricky, okay? Because what you need to know about ischemic colitis is this will present as blood in the stool in a patient with severe cardiovascular disease history. And it's due to ischemic ulcers at the watershed areas. That is the splenic flexure, the recto, recto sigmoid junction. Now you say here, well, I don't get it, Michael. There's there's fecal cold blood positive. And this guy has some sort of, you know, he has chronic AFib as an example. 
this isn't cardiovascular disease per se, okay? When we say cardiovascular disease, we mean atherosclerotic disease. So if they, for example, tell you patient had a coronary artery bypass grafting performed two years ago, patient has intermittent claudication, patient has his long history of hypertension, diabetes, smoking, okay? They give you a big cardiovascular disease history of that nature and then tell you, blood in the stool, that's just ischemic colitis, okay? So that's atherosclerosis to uh, the bowel, and it can cause bleeding at the watershed area, as I said, ischemic ulcers. It can classically be more acute as well. A patient has some sort of intervention, like a surgery, an acute loss of blood flow uh, to the watershed areas. That's blood in the stool in a patient with a severe cardiovascular disease history, atherosclerosis history. In contrast, Mesoteric ischemia, correct answer here. So this is going to be in a patient who has atrial fibrillation. Okay, this is acute mesenteric ischemia, not chronic mesenteric ischemia. So acute mesenteric ischemia is where you have a left atrial mural thrombus that's launched off to the SMA or IMA, and now you have severe abdominal pain that's quote unquote out of proportion to the physical exam. So this guy presents with severe abdo pain, holy shit. You do the abdominal examination, nothing dramatic. It just says mild diffuse tenderness, okay? So um, you should know pain out of proportion in the physical exam. That's high yield for acute mesoteric ischemia, as I said. It can be a left atrial mural thrombus that's launched off. It can also be in the setting of defibrillation, cardioversion. I've seen that as well. And it can rarely be acute on chronic, which is chronic mesoteric ischemia is where you have atherosclerosis to the bowel in a, in a vascular path, as I just talked about, with ischemic colitis. Uh, but then you can get a plaque that ruptures, and that'll cause severe ad abdominal pain out of proportion to the physical exam, okay? So you say, well, why is the pH low? Why do we have the metabolic acidosis here? It's lactic acidosis due to ischemia, okay? It's very high yield. So also just cases of shock. There's no evidence of, of overt shock in this case. But tangentially, if you get cardiogenic shock, septic shock, hypovolemic shock, even obstructive shock from, let's say, a severe pulmonary embolism, uh, and you see bicarbs low, and you're like, why the fuck's the bicarb low? That's just lactic acidosis due to poor perfusion, so increased anaerobic respiration of tissues. So we have lactic acidosis here in the setting of acute mesoteric ischemia. And as I said, this is not chronic mesoteric ischemia. Chronic mesoteric ischemia is going to be atherosclerosis in a patient with severe cardiovascular disease history, intermittent claudication, uh, cabbage as a history, and they get uh, abdominal pain one to two hours after eating a meal. Okay, so it'll sound like a duodenal ulcer. Okay, you say, well, they eat, and then an hour later, they get abdominal pain. You're like, maybe that's H. pylori, that's an abdominal ulcer. It's not, because an abdominal ulcer, a uh, duodenal ulcer from H. pylori might be a 29-year-old dude from Indonesia, whereas if they give you a 70-year-old who has severe diabetes, hypertension, intermittent claudication, etc., that's going to be chronic mesoteric ischemia, which is angina to the bowel. Okay, it's just atherosclerosis to the bowel, increased oxygen demand when uh, food is consumed. That's chronic mesoteric ischemia, okay, atherosclerosis. But as I just said in this clip, this is acute mesenteric ischemia, and this is due to a, a thromboembolism from the left atrium basically always, unless it's a chronic uh, atherosclerotic plaque that's ruptured and now caused acute on chronic. Finally, Perforate ulcer, wrong fucking answer. This will show up on step two surgery classically or internal medicine as someone who feels like uh, he or she's been kicked in the abdomen. Okay. They might tell you there's a history of uh, ulcers. They might tell you that history of GERD. They can give you a pretty vague history. And then they're just going to tell you, boom, patient feels like he or she's been kicked in the abdomen. And there might be SIR, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. As I said, uh, vitals are slightly awry. And they want an uh, x-ray of the chest and abdomen to diagnose, okay? Because you're looking for air under the diaphragm. That's exceedingly high yield for ruptured viscous perforate ulcer, which, by the way, maybe I should, should have fucking said that ischemic colitis, you're going to diagnose with colonoscopy, looking for the evidence of the watershed areas uh, for the ischemic ulcers. Mesenteric ischemia, in contrast, uh, you're going to, going to do mesenteric angiography, okay? They really like mesenteric angiography for both acute and chronic. Um, to diagnose the mesoteric ischemia. Perforated ulcer, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.